Mark Morano is founder of Climate Depot. Uh, he is the author of the book that came out earlier this year, Green Fraud, Why the Green New Deal is Even Worse Than You Think. And as you heard me say yesterday, or if you didn't, it's worth repeating, this is the book that the bookseller refused to offer for sale for our conference. And we said, if you're not going to sell all our books, you're going to sell none of our books. So. <clears throat> if you did buy a copy of Mark's book, he will be signing them after um, he talks this morning. Mark also uh, served as senior staff on the U.S. Senate Environmental and Public Works Committee. Uh, he also wrote another book, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Cli Climate Change, and produced and starred in the films Climate Hustle and Climate Hustle 2. And one of the collaborators on that film was Kevin Sorbo, who many of you know is a film producer and actor who's attended Steamboat Institute events before. Um, his next book, The Great Reset, Global Elites and the Permanent Lockdown, is set for release early next year. Rolling Stone magazine has declared Mark Marana one of the planet's 17 climate killers. Ooh. Uh, and a central cell of the climate denial machine. I just love his bio, it's so entertaining. Um, Mark was dishonored by climate activists at Media Matters as the climate misinformer of the year. Um, he was also named at, or dishonored again as the number two uh, top 10 climate deniers list by actor Leonardo DiCaprio in National Geographic. So, I know Mark, Mark is just so proud of this. Okay, you can read more of his bio in our program. Uh, after Mark speaks, he's going to be joined on stage by Carrie Sheffield, who received the Tony Blankley Fellowship Award last night. Um, and so at this point, let's welcome to the stage Mark Morano. Winter getting colder, summer getting warmer, tidal wave come across the Mexican border. Why back gallon is cheaper by the bay? Just don't get busted singing Christmas Thank you, Jack. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. That's us. That's right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor to be here back at the Steamboat Institute to speak. Today, we're going to have a little fun. Uh, climate change is an issue that makes a lot of people's eyes roll. They don't, they, they don't want to hear about it. I think you'll enjoy what we have today. I'm going to go through the latest science on climate change. We're going to talk about how it's become woke. Uh, identity politics has invaded it. Uh, also a little bit about the, the film, uh, the film she mentioned, Jennifer mentioned, Climate Hustle, Kevin Sorbo uh, narrated. That was out last fall and uh, that was a great film. It went through all aspects of the climate agenda from how climate is a religion to how kids have been indoctrinated to all the wacky solutions, shrinking human beings. We have an interview with an NYU professor who wants to shrink humans to lower their carbon footprint and they're dead serious. <laughs> Uh, it's in this film. So, my book, Green Fraud, which is out, uh, which is out now. This is the first book here. First book, Politically Incorrect Guide. This came out 2018 and updated 2019 when AOC did the uh, uh, Green New Deal. And this is the film with uh, Kevin Sorbo. I think you'll really enjoy it. We call it climate entertainment because we go through all the aspects of the whole agenda, and we have the climate activists admitting that even if we follow their prescriptions, we're not going to make any impact on global emissions. In other words, the UN Paris Agreement, the Green New Deal, cap carbon taxes, cap and trade, John Kerry has said multiple times, Joe Biden has admitted, UN officials have admitted, that it wouldn't make any difference, not only on the climate, but on global CO2 emissions, because you're not getting in the developing world, and they're the ones starving for energy. But I highly recommend that. Now, she mentioned some of my bio. This was actually at the, the eve, that, that may be urine on the ground there, I'm not sure, but that's the streets of Paris. They had wanted posters up the day we released Climate Hustle in Paris at the UN uh, Climate Summit. And this was a big deal. Our, our whole opening at an old historic Paris theater for the film was shut down by, the whole entrance had to be shut down by police because of all the protesters that came, the climate activists came. We ended up, it ended up boosting it because we ended up getting coverage in the New York Times for all their trouble. But this is what they actually had all over the UN summit on the streets. This is a random street in Paris uh, near the hotel I was staying at. Just wanted posters of, of us because the movie was being released. We had the audacity to release a climate hustle movie at at the UN summit. This is the book, uh, the foreword is by Mark Stein. If you know who Mark Stein is, the book is worth buying just to read his foreword. 
Uh, he has been phenomenal on these issues. He gets it. He is hilarious. But I go through every aspect. I go through the historical aspects of the Green New Deal, uh, how it's a, literally a mirror of the UN Sustainable Development Agenda. And in a, in a nutshell, what they've done with these environmental issues, since the 1960s, with Paul Ehrlich's overpopulation uh, yeah, control issue, the overpopulation bomb, they have used, the, the environmental left has used the, the, any environmental issue from overpopulation to resource scarcity to famines to deforestation to climate as their Trojan horse for the exact same solution. So one of the chapters in my book, in fact, I mentioned it's my favorite chapter, I go back to the 1970s. Before fossil fuels caused global warming, fossil fuels caused global cooling in the next ice age. I go back, it's identical, and I have all the citations, the exact quotes. I believe in actually, I don't believe in asserting anything. I quote it, footnote it, there's hundreds of footnotes. But they talk about CIA reports, uh, the, it, media reports, all in scientists, scientific reports urging Nixon to deal with the uh, global cooling problem. They believed our aerosols from fossil fuels were blocking out the sun, which was creating global dimming, which was going to create another ice age. Uh, it was, we were, they were suggesting putting soot on the Arctic. Uh, they were warning that it was going to lead to climate instability, wars. They were warning that it was going to cause more extreme weather. It was literally the exact, and they had tipping points every possible thing. So that's in the book. I have a whole chapter on the children's climate crusade. Greta Thunberg, it's a corporate climate crusade. Kids are now suing not only our federal government, but the European, European EU and other governments to make a habitable climate for their future. And these are big lawsuits and they're, you know, this is, they're using the children now to like essentially implement the Green New Deal behind the scenes. That's why if you, by the way, the book, she mentioned it wouldn't sell it at a local seller. There have been activity, there's been climate activists going after Amazon because Amazon says they're, you know, a climate uh, friendly organization and they only support climate activists. And they're trying to get the book pulled off of Amazon. So Mark Stein has offered to sign any copy of Green Fraud if you buy it on Stein Online uh, on this because, because this is literally a battle for free speech. Regnery published it. If you guys know who Alex Berenson is, uh, who's fighting the COVID, uh, hysteria, COVID lockdown hysteria, he had to switch publishers over to Regnery. Regnery is a free speech uh, publication house because other publishers, including the big ones, Simon Schuster, they're having all kinds of problems now. They won't publish a book that breaks the narrative. So I'm going to give you a little brief history of, you know, in, a, in a, yeah, simple, simplest terms. Scientists note, geologically, the Earth is in a CO2 famine. The records, we've had ice ages when CO2 was as high as 8,000, and temperatures have been similar or present when we've had 20 times higher. So it's not that CO2 doesn't uh, change the climate. Yes, it can change the climate, but so can other, other factors, hundreds of other factors, and this was admitted before the whole climate thing. Everything from tilt to Earth's axis, water vapor, methane, uh, the sun, uh, clouds, it's an incredible series of events. But what's happened here, if you look at Al Gore's film, this is the actual geologic history of the Earth. Al Gore's film is only looking at a narrow part in Earth's geologic history, and he shows it. But that's the high point that Al Gore got up on the elevator in his movie and tried to do. If you look back at the history of the Earth, it's not high. So we have Princeton physicist, the foremost expert on greenhouse effect, testifying to Congress that geologically speaking, we have very low CO2. This is a NOAA chart up today, I mean, still up today, uh, at, on their website. This is the current temperatures. You see that little blue thing that jumped up? That's what they're calling the climate emergency. The red is um, the much warmer temperatures. 90% of Earth's history has been uh, warmer than today, and 90% of Earth's history has had higher CO2 levels. You can't, we haven't, we've had, it's been too warm to have ice at either pole. This is government data right here. This is from Greenpeace co-founder Patrick Moore, who turned against it. You'll hear about the hottest year on record. It's usually hundreds of a degree difference, and it's statistically indistinguishable. But remember, this is if you actually smooth out the temperature, that's the last uh, 125 years or so of temperature based on if you, don't, if you don't go with these tens, hundreds of a degree, which they try to scare you with. One of my favorite quotes to explain this to the public, climate change governed by hundreds of factors, the idea we can manage it by manipulating at the margins one factor, CO2, is as misguided as it gets. It's scientific nonsense. Uh, water vapor, much more potent greenhouse gas. Are they going to start regulating our garden hoses, swimming pools? Don't put it beyond them because if you're actually worried about man's impact on climate, there's a lot of other things you can do. 
You can sum it up here. Rod Serling did not actually say this, but a world where the people believe the temperature of the planet can be controlled by giving more money to the government. That's, the, <laughs> that's literally what the UN report. In fact, one of the things they say is all the scientists agree in my book, Green Fraud, and also the previous book, I go in great detail of how these 97% is just pure nonsense. One of the studies was 77 anonymous scientists that they had whittled down uh, from 10,000 plus, and they're asked questions that most skeptics, is CO2 cause climate change, does it warm the earth? Yes. Uh, has the earth warmed? Yes. Richard Toll, a UN lead author who later turned against the UN, said the 97% is pulled from thin air, not based on any credible research, but it's shoved in your face every time you talk about climate change. The Guardian, this is just came out, I don't know if you guys were paying attention, about three weeks ago, new UN report, dire warning, almost out of time. Have we heard that before? In my book, Green Fraud, I go back to 1864, and the first tipping point for climatic excess was done. So we're talking centuries of climate tipping points. And here's some other ones, 1972, 1989. We've had scientists at NASA warn that Obama's first term, we had four years to save the climate. They're doing it again. And they're doing it, these are some of the old predictions, uh, Paul Ehrlich, four billion people would perish in the great die-off. Let me see your hands. Have you all lived through the great die-off and how many of you are still here? Are there? Okay. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. Humans have only 10 years left. That was Al Gore when his film came out in 2006. AOC now extended it to 12 years. If you watch uh, the, the film Climate Hustle, we go through and show Prince Charles at a 100-month tipping point. He literally counted it down carefully. And once he got down to zero, he ended up extending it to like 2047. So this is what happens. They, they never actually face it. The UN IPCC, what people will say is the gold standard, is actually fool's gold. It's a purely political body, body posing as a scientific institution. They set themselves up in 1988. They look at the science. If CO2 fails to, to, to be a climate emergency in their view, they fail to be in charge of the solution. So it's a self-interested lobbying organization that will never look at other factors. And I have a whole chapter on ClimateGate and the whole history of all the corruption at the UN. But to give you an example, this is August of this year, a few weeks ago. UN lead author Jim Cosin is a senior scientist with a climate risk firm, and he was one of the IPCC authors, and he, and he says, here's his, the intent of the IPCC report on climate. We hope it'll change people's attitudes and affect the way they vote. So there you have it, a UN scientific document. Its stated goal by its lead author is to change the way you vote. This is Richard Lindsay, an MIT scientist, which I'll get a little bit to later. Controlling carbon is a bureaucrat's dream. If you control carbon, you control life. The UN has openly stated their goal is, is to redistribute wealth by climate policy. And this is my favorite line. The UN official, vice chair, this has almost nothing to do with environmental policy anymore. Gee, you think? Settled science. Okay. 2012, New York Times, Earth produce, cooler Earth produces climate stability. And this is, uh, this is based on saying we need to cool the Earth. But the same New York Times, 1976, a warmer Earth produces climate stability. And this is the year. Cool periods produce greater um, climate instability. So they were warning about global cooling at the time. It's whatever they need to do. One of the things we hear about is planting trees, which is a great thing. But if you're talking about it in a climate context, it's not settled science. Planting trees could be the most effective solution, but then planting trees can make global warming worse. Apparently, it has to do with what region, how much albedo, how much the sun absorbs it. Um, it's a really complicated issue. Settled science, this is one of my favorite things. Every time a local media does a story, they always claim wherever they are is heating up twice as fast as the rest of the world. So if you look at this, everywhere is heating twice as fast. It's just, it's just nonsense. But here's where it gets silly. Predict both outcomes. If you have the Super Bowl and you predict both teams to win, you could always say, I predicted it. My, my football models were right. Well, that's the same thing with climate models. Let's start here. Climate change causes less rain. This is a study of nature. But climate change causes more rain and less water. Climate change means less snow. Climate change means more snow. These are all according to the peer-reviewed scientific evidence. Climate change causes Antarctica to lose land ice. Climate change causes Antarctica to gain land ice. By the way, Antarctica is contributing to a sea level lowering. NASA studies have shown there's no climate signal on Antarctica. Why, climate change causes duller autumn leaves. Climate change causes more colorful autumn leaves. Climate change uh, makes for saltier seas. 
Climate change makes for less salty seas. We just keep going. Climate change increases spread of malaria, decreases spread of malaria. Climate change then outbreaks increases with climate change. Climate change could decrease it. So whatever happens, hey, it could do this, it could do that. The US will see 50% more lightning strikes thanks to global warming. But wait, lightning strikes could drop 15% as climate change causes global temperatures to soar. Foggier, climate change makes San Francisco foggier. Climate change makes San Francisco less foggy. I mean, what is it? Who knows? Climate change causes more hurricanes, except when climate change causes less hurricanes. Climate change, this is my fun, they're, like, they're giving up now. Climate change will both increase and decrease fertility. So whatever happens, it's climate change. Beavers, our beavers may be making the effects of climate change worse, but hold on, beavers are humanity's natural ally in combating climate change. What are we supposed to believe? Is a beaver good or bad? Mammals shrink when the earth heats up. Horses the size of cats. Oh my God, we got to do something past the Green New Deal. I don't want horses shrinking. Don't worry, climate change is making horses fat. So I think we're going to have fat little short horses. I'm not sure, but this is where we're dealing with. The lockdowns, coronavirus prompts record drop in emissions. Wait a minute, CO2 hits new high despite uh, COVID-19 lockdowns. Which is it? They can't even measure CO2 can come up with a, with a plausible storyline on this. Okay, climate change causes more crime. These are done by UN scientists. They say that barroom brawls, rapes, car thefts are going to go up. Climate change causes more crime. Climate change will become one of the major forces driving crime. Okay, so you're worried now. We got to do something. We need a carbon tax. We need to get solar panels immediately or we're going to have more crime. But here's the problem. New York Times says lowering crime causes global warming. So before we start trying to worry about, because how is this possible? This is no joke. Quotes from the New York Times. Inmates consume less than an average citizen, so fewer prisoners mean higher overall consumption. Think about this. Think about this in the context of, and Scott Atlas will be talking about this uh, in the next talk. Think about it in the context of lockdowns. In 2016, the New York Times is extolling the virtues of making everyone an inmate in lockdown. And this is what ended up happening with COVID, which we'll get into in a minute. So global warming causes more crime. Reducing crime causes more global warming. What's the solution? Defunding the police. This is it. This is nuts. This is what there are now. There's no new Green New Deal without police abolition. Who cares about defunding? Let's get rid of it now. These are Green New Deal activists. If you disagree with anything you just saw, you are a climate denier who belongs in jail, who will then have, you'll then have a lower carbon footprint. So <laughs> climate goes woke. I mentioned this. Toxic masculinity. Now, I'm, this, is, this is kind of funny because you think back, Al Gore is so quaint now. Al Gore talked about polar bears. By the way, polar bears are disappearing from Al Gore's books and movies. Uh, they're at or near historic population highs. Al Gore dropped them from his sequel, Inconvenient Sequel, and his book, just no mention. They were the mascot. But now we have, Al Gore was worried about sea level polar bears uh, uh, and, and solutions like cap and trade. That seems like so quaint. Now if you look at it, toxic masculinity is the reason for climate change. A lead NASA climate scientist, climate change links it to white supremacy. We'll never head off the catastrophe without dismantling white supremacy. And I have multiple NASA scientists coming out, calls for climate racial justice. We have uh, other activists calling it white man science. We have statisticians at our major universities saying statistics are, are, are um, racist because they're done with racist scientific methods. I mean, you can't trust data at this point, according to academia. Cancel pets. I mean, imagine if Al Gore had come out in 2006 in his first film and talked about canceling pets. Pets are gobbling up the planet now. This is the bad thing. Having a baby, pure environmental vandalism. How many people here have engaged in pure environmental vandalism? Okay, very good. All right, you, you, so you have a lot of kids. You like your car? Well, guess what? Part of the climate agenda, and I'll get to this in a minute, of the climate lockdown, car ownership is inefficient. We now have proposals for a constant roving fleet of rental electric cars. You don't need to own your own car. In Canada, they're calling to eliminate ownership of pickup trucks because they're gas guzzling. If you need a truck, you can just go to a place and rent it for a few hours, which we'll get to. This is all where we're headed here. So we've redefined the evidence for climate change. We don't look at global warming. If you want to know how it's faring, you look at turbulence, rape, crime, vehicle theft, train derailments, how the police funding is going, car accidents. This is where we are now, climate lockdowns. And this is where it gets scary because overnight in March 2020, the Green New Deal was implemented by 
the public health bureaucracy. Everything climate activists have been campaigning for since the overpopulation fears, the crushing of private enterprise, the crushing of human freedom. John Holdren, Obama's science bar in 1976 or 75, lamented that people could hop in their car, drive to a supermarket, get a six pack of beer and drive home. They were after stopping this idea of the, the, the freedom of human movement back in the 70s. Overnight, everything the Green New Deal wanted, everything climate became a reality. We were locked at home. We had absolute you know, emission lowering. They had talked for decades, and I'd been to these, I'd go to every single UN climate summit. Uh, they talked for about planned recessions to fight global warming. Well, what was a COVID lockdown but a massive government planned, well, I don't want to call it planned, but a recession that they reacted, they seized on an opportunity. So here's what's happening. MIT scientist 2009 came, said this, it's hard to imagine a better leverage point than carbon dioxide. We inhale oxygen, we exhale CO2 to assume control over a society. It's essential to energy and breathing. If you demonize CO2 and gain control, you control everything. So it has a kind of fundamental attractiveness to the bureaucratic mentality. Now, it's hard to imagine a better leverage point than carbon dioxide. They imagined it and that was viral fears. COVID is, this is the new variant, it's coming. It's not Delta, that's the new COVID variant on the screen. This is what's happening now. There's governments around the world talking about the permanent lockdowns. We have Gates Soros funded publications and professors openly talking about, we need to now switch to a climate lockdown. Not my word, their word. They're coming up with the phrase climate lockdown. Here's the Washington Post. We're flattening the coronavirus curve. We can flatten the climate curve too. Just two weeks to flatten the climate curve. Who's in? Come on. Teen activist Jean Margolin and Teen Vogue, if we can shut down the world to stop a virus, it also means it's possible to do the same for climate change. Do you see what's happening here? The climate activists were in shock. They were literally jealous of COVID-19 because all the th stuff they had proposed for decades became reality in a few short weeks across the world. John, John uh, Kerry, climate envoy, I don't say this in a partisan way, but the parallels between COVID-19 and climate change are screaming at us. You could just as easily replace the words climate change with COVID-19. What are those parallels? You, you, I, I, the UN officials, New York Times climate, I've all praised China's one party rule. The parallels are this. COVID gave them one, a one party state. And that is the public health bureaucracy unelected with politicians and emergency powers. They now have Chinese style power over the American people. We have people in Australia right now with snap lockdowns. You wake up, you think you're gonna have a normal day. Suddenly they can tell you that based on some case count, you can't go out that day, you're under curfew, you could be arrested, you're not your only essential services, you have to justify where you're going. That's why the climate activists are so excited. The Great Reset, this is the topic of my next book. The pandemic represents a narrow window to, to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world. This is the Davos Economic Forum, the billionaire's playground. They have the meetings every year, Al Gore, Prince Charles, Bill Gates, all the players. This is what they're seizing on. This is their, the excitement over what COVID-19 can do. And they're trying to now get climate um, tucked into that agenda. So in other words, if we don't deal with climate change, we'll be a lot worse viruses. Net zero, which you'll hear from the Biden administration, you'll hear in Europe, you'll hear from the UN, net zero CO2 emissions is like a lockdown, but permanent. And we're also finding that the lockdowns are permanent. Time Magazine, the pandemic remade every corner of society. Now it's climate's turn. Who's in? Does this sound exciting? Climate can now follow what they did with lockdowns. Equivalent of COVID emission drop needed every two years. Okay, so we shut down to the point where people couldn't go to church, but you could go to Walmart. You couldn't, you, every 60% uh, of restaurants in New York City's mall mom and pops are said to never be reopening. We did all that, but we still need to do it every two years if we're gonna meet those climate goals. This was uh, eerie, 2012, the UN uh, head of the UN climate panel, shutting down the whole economy is the only way of limiting, he was just saying a rhetorical point, but it's eerie how dead on accurate he later came talking about just shut, they wanna shut down the economy. COVID gave them that opportunity. Climate activists are seizing on this. Chuck Schumer is urging Joe Biden right now to declare a national climate emergency, giving Joe Biden Andrew Cuomo type emergency powers, blue state governor powers. That's what they're hoping for. Climate lockdowns, International Energy Agency did a report this year urging behavioral changes, a shift away from private car use, adding upper speed limits, thermostat controls in your house, limits on your hot water, again, this is the International Energy Agency. This is not Alex Jones. I like to say this quote. 2020 and 2021 are the year that conspiracy realities outnumber conspiracy theories. 
This is what we're facing here. Absolute zero, UK funded report. Urging climate lockdown, stop flying, no new roads, closing airports, stop eating beef, lamb, stop doing anything that causes emissions. This was in the report, UK government funded. Regulate carbon dioxide, what humans exhale from our mouth, similar to asbestos. This is in official government documents. Okay, so you're not convinced maybe. How do we scare the public about climate? They failed for 40 years. Okay, this is it. Climate death tolls. Climate is a killer, but we don't acknowledge it on death certificates. Cause of death, climate change. This is now a thing. Academia, this is spreading. Bill Gates said the actual economic and death toll from climate change will be much, much greater. So there you have it. Climate change is going to, now here's what's interesting. Car crashes under Obama's Department of Transportation, fatal car crashes were said to be increasing due to climate change. It's a study, you can't argue with science. The American Cancer Society, uh, said climate change is already increasing cancer risk. And by the way, they fretted over the carbon footprint of cancer care. Now, if you're diagnosed with cancer, are you gonna go to a doctor who's worried about the carbon footprint of the care he wants to give you? But this is it, so if you die of cancer, that could be listed. Gore's new health warning, every organ system can be affected by climate change. So let's get this straight. If you die of cancer, car accident, or organ failure, you could have climate change listed as a cause of death on your death certificate. And of course, this quick note, the reality, Climate change, death, and extreme weather risk dropped 99% since 1920. And this is according to UN data, government data. This is what we're facing. Scratch out coronavirus and put climate change. This is what they want. If you guys saw the undercover videos of CNN uh, by the, um, what's the name of that group? The Verit Project Veritas. That's what they're actually saying. We're moving on from climate. This is probably what we could be seeing. Uh, hold on, where's the other one? Yeah, this is it. They're gonna scratch out climate change and they're gonna have a death toll. Bill Gates has given its blessing. It's in academia. And here's the thing, who's killing, how is climate killing people? The target is America. USA is the number one climate killer. This just came out a few, uh, I guess the end of July. Three Americans create enough carbon CO2 emissions to kill a person. So you have kids, you drive a nice car, you have a house, you have your air conditioner too cold, you're killing people around the world. This is what they want you to think, and people will think it. That's my book coming out early next year. Green fraud, a quick thing on energy, what they're doing to us here with the Green New Deal. Biden's made every cabinet agency a uh, climate agency. He's also doing it through executive orders, stopping pipelines, he's doing just crushing American energy. This is our future. This is in Europe right now. The era of constant electricity is ending. I have a whole chapter in Green Fraud on the future of our energy if we follow what, what, what Europe is doing. Families would have to get used to power only when it's available. Get used to California-style blackouts. Coming to America requires personal choices. The regulations, home radiators set to 10 degrees cooler. They're gonna be regulating every aspect of your life because the larger issue of climate, just like the safety of the COVID regulations and lockdowns. I testified with Patrick Moore, the co-founder of Greenpeace, 2019 in the House on species extinction. And we were debunking all the alarming claims by the United Nations. But one of the things you wanna note is that if you're all into solar, I'm not against solar and wind, they just need technology, but you don't mandate one energy. Uh, that's not ready for prime time. It's less than 4% of US energy production. Nearly 80% is, CO, is uh, fossil fuels. You go back 100 years, by the way, 80% of our global energy was fossil fuels. Nothing's changed. But the more we mandate this, look at the carbon, look at the energy footprint that's required of wind and solar. You can't even barely see fossil fuels on there. The uh, unit per energy, it's amazing. What they're trying to do is cause massive energy shortages and it's going to hurt. And, and the Trump administration, was the most awesome finish on energy the Americans had, America had ever seen since the 1950s. We had more energy exports than imports since Harry Truman was president. We had more energy consumption for the first time since Eisenhower, uh, more energy production than consumption since Eisenhower was president. And we did this while leading the world and reducing CO2. So there's no reason for a UN Paris Agreement, a Green New Deal. There's no reason to get all this. We were achieving it through economic growth, through technological innovation. We were leading the world, showing Showing them how it's done. You don't need the heavy hand of government. If you're worried about CO2, you would do the opposite. If you thought we faced a climate emergency, you would do the opposite of the Green New Deal and UN Paris Agreement. You would do the free market solution on climate, and that is where we are. Here's the other thing. The other thing, this is hilarious. Every United Nations climate treaty has led to higher CO2 emissions, and every United Nations climate treaty I have in my book, all the praise. We've saved the world. This will be the day that our children remember. And then a year later, we have to save the world again. There's no criteria under which they'll ever say we've solved the climate.
This is UN climate chief saying we're doing it, China's doing it right on, uh, cli on global warming. They avoid the hurdles that other countries have, including the US. Uh, uh, Tom Friedman, New York Times, said the same thing. Remember, we now have the model. Unelected bureaucrats declare public health emergency. They now want Biden to declare a climate emergency. They have the template. They can actually go forward. This is a frightening uh, Passover of democracy here. Lauds one party rule. China, meanwhile, China is building about one coal plant a week, uh, are some of the estimates right now. They are laughing at the world as they are just booming economically and doing whatever they want while they're paying climate lip service and you have the Biden administration pandering to them. So even if you're into the Green New Deal, no effect on climate, barely distinguishable from zero, even if you accept the UN climate models. Uh, every study showing the same thing with the UN Paris. John Kerry has admitted this. Uh, I'd like to end with this. UN, University of Pennsylvania geologist Robert Giegengack done hundreds of peer-reviewed studies. Ivy League University. None of the strategies that have been offered by the US government or EPA or anybody else has the remotest chance of altering the climate if, in fact, it's controlled by carbon dioxide. This is our reality, but it doesn't matter what the science says, what the esteem and all the UN scientists who've turned against it. It matters that they're trying to push this on us and they have COVID model now, the lockdown model, and they could potentially get a lot of success on this. We have to fight this with everything that we have. That's how you can reach me. Uh, Mariano at Climate Depot, we're gonna have a Q&A here coming up. Uh, that's the book, Green Fraud, Why the Green New Deal is Worse. Uh, so thank you very much. I appreciate the time here. Thank you. Thanks. Hey. All right. Hey. And I have that. All right, Mark. I feel like we just went through a college course in <laughs> twenty minutes. That was excellent. Uh, so much information. Uh, I know you have you have a few extra slides about Afghanistan. I know this is a very serious topic. Yes. Uh, so let's talk about that and just obviously keeping in mind. You know, the, the tragic 13 American lives that have already been lost, yes, 170 okay. Afghans. Um, how does this connect with climate change? Well, can we have the PowerPoint back up? I was going to show another uh, slide of the latest news from Afghanistan. This is uh, what the media is up to here. It's not Biden's fault. Climate did it. Now, this was funny a week ago, but here's the problem. CBS News about two weeks ago said climate change strengthened the Taliban. And they literally went through and they claimed it was because of global warming, crop failures. They, they did it evidence-free. They just made these assertions that it was hurting the Afghan farmers and that therefore they were, they, they were more uh, subjected to the Taliban. They were lured in. The problem is the UN's own data shows crop yields have doubled in the exact same time period that CBS News was claiming climate change fueled the strength. That's point one, and that's bad enough. But the next point is, according to the media, the Taliban's not so bad after all. Why? Because they're vowing to fight terror and climate change. So the media is being seduced now because they have these woke climate warriors. I don't know if you call them woke, but and the Taliban now fighting climate change. And then the third thing, China is poised to move in here. This is, relates directly to the Green New Deal. Aligning itself with the Taliban, trying to exploit Afghans' rare earth minerals, which we need for solar, wind, and electric car batteries, and we're not allowed to even drill for in America, generally speaking. I mean, it's very, 20 years ago, I did a story on lanthanide, a rare earth mineral, metal, and the Chinese were laughing because they, they were able to build, and our mines were being shut down in the Mojave Desert out in California. So the big thing here is Biden says, and John Kerry says, climate is the biggest national security threat. Their climate policy is the biggest national security threat. Russian oil imports at 11-year high, about to go to record high. Biden administration begging OPEC to increase production. And China poised to be the dominant player in all the rare earth renewable energy metals that you're going to need. This is a disaster for America. Just think, in coming off of what we did with Donald Trump, where we had been literally achieved, not energy independence, I like to say we achieved energy dominance. And we were no longer going to be needed to fight wars over energy under that policy. But they're doing everything they can to destroy American energy now. Yeah, well, Mark, I love that you're pointing out the headlines in your presentation, you're calling out the media. And I know in your introduction, we heard about all the uh, anti-accolades that you got, but yeah. I, I used to work for the uh, organization Accuracy in Media, if you folks yeah. don't know it, they've been around for more than 50 years, uh, founded by Reed Irvine. Uh, we, we gave him, before I was there, but I wish I would, had given it to you, um, the Reed Irvine Award for calling out media bias. And so, uh, yes, yes, you, you deserve many other accolades, oh, and I'm you so glad much. you're yeah. here. But uh, in terms of uh, 
science. You, you, in your very uh, opening, you, you mentioned the climate science. And it seems like, I mean, COVID has just laid this bare, that the word science seems to be an art in many respects, and people manipulate it. Do you think sort of the principles of enlightenment and the scientific process, I mean, is it even relevant? Is, is it totally dismantled at this point? It absolutely is. In fact, in the book Green Fraud, I go into what has happened with the science. You can be wrong on science if you're wrong in the way that policy, in the politicians uh, favor. In other words, you can overestimate, over exaggerate any kind of threat, no problem. But if you try to downplay anything, you are attacked, defunded. There are so many professors, and I detail this, I touch on it in Green Fraud, I detail it in the first book, Politically Incorrect Guide, and we detail it in the movie, Climate Hustle, who speak out on climate, and they're literally emeritus professors uh, uh, and tenured professors who lose their job. I mean, they're, they're not allowed. You cannot challenge the orthodox status quo. This is about the science. It's not actually the science. It's faith in the scientific institutions. And what they've done, it's like a pronouncement now from the UN. They're trying to get equal to a pronouncement from the WHO or CDC, where all these, everyone must follow now. And that's, it's politicized science at its core. They come up with a, a, a where they want, and then they only fund and support the science. In the, in the case of climate, by the way, it's the models that do it. When current reality fails to alarm, make scarier and scarier predictions of the future. You could have a climate scientist up here say, no, the polar bear is very grave. How? Their numbers are at record high. Even the US government's admitted that. Well, our predictions now of 50 years are much worse than they were just a few years ago. So they just make scarier predictions, and then that becomes the headline. Polar bear is doomed, despite the fact that their numbers are booming. Mm. And folks, I want to thank those who have submitted questions. You all know what to do at this point. Uh, keep them coming in. We have a few different questions here asking about what's happening with children in K-12 education. What have you seen with this? Uh, and somebody else asked, can you write a children's book? <laughs> there are a couple climate children's books uh, that go through. One of them has an Al Gore-like cartoon figure. And then there's another one, I think, by Holly Fretwell. There's, another, there's a couple books out there. We've been talking about doing possible uh, curriculum with Greenpeace co-founder. Patrick Moore or someone from a K through 12 for private public schools aren't going to be interested, but private schools and homeschool on just on environmental issues, everything from species extinction to pollution. The other story I didn't get a chance to get into is the pollution story is huge. Kids are being taught that, you know, we're choking off the planet. Meanwhile, the United States on like every measure since the first Earth Day, I detail this in Green Fraud, our air water quality has gone through the roof. We're to the point now where liberal mainstream journalists admit that we've solved the problems of air pollution and that climate is a separate issue. But kids are being indoctrinated all the way through uh, and it's the whole Greta Thunberg thing. I don't believe we should accept that kids are being indoctrinated. My hope is that it's kind of like a 60s flower child and 60s, they didn't stay that way. I mean, a lot of them became like David Horowitz and they turned against it. So we, we have to stick with these kids as they get older and we can deprogram them. But I don't think we should pander to their belief that we face a climate emergency. Mm. What about recycling in terms of just the, the mechanics of it, because that was something that was, uh, you know, slowly over time, it's so normalized now, this idea yeah. that in your house, every household has to has, have that recycling bin. Uh, I went to Antarctica on a trek. Uh, was, my goal was to go to every yeah. continent before I turned 30, and that was my second to last. Wow, that's great. Um, but it was with the Harvard Alumni Society, and we had a professor on the boat who had helped Al Gore get his Nobel Prize. And I asked him about recycling. I said, does this, actually help because there's so much energy that's used to recycle uh, and he said yeah it's basically a wash but it's more just to help people with their mindset and to understand yes. the importance i mean I, my job just was like i mean I, I appreciated his honesty but it's so normalized at this point i mean it seems it that the children are indoctrinated we're all indoctrinated right now yes and they've weaponized things uh one of the in climate hustle too you'll actually see we interview a uh, a education expert who talks about how they weaponize kids to turn against the parents. And, and I also detail over issues like recycling, energy use, not turning a light bulb off. We had kids to come testify. Uh, it was a separate time from Greta, I believe, or may have been the same day, but it was a separate event outside the Capitol, where they said, mom and dad have trashed the planet, and it's up to us kids to fix it. Thanks, mom and dad. They weaponize kids against the parents. But yeah, recycling, uh, a lot of things make sense, but it's more of a social control thing to make everyone in the mindset of doing their part, a virtue signaling thing, because it, when you look at it from household, and then there's a lot of places, particularly in Europe, in some places in the US where it's 
very strict people getting fines and it's very uh, detailed and mandated and oriented so it's just another lever of control but you know recycling in and of itself can make sense the question is like you say is it a wash uh, and that's uh, that's part of it but it's it really is just getting everyone to think about the earth uh, on every mindset and, and kids today have to be deprogrammed on a lot of this particularly climate mm -hmm. what about uh, we've got a few questions here about kind of uh, you know, being pro-environment, you know, we, we all want to have clean air. Yes. We all want to live in a healthy environment. Um, one, one question here is asking about what do you think about the climate caucus led by Congressman John Curtis? They, pu they push free market and innovative energy policies. Great question. I, there's a Western caucus, a lot of congressmen, there's all these free market groups out there. The, the only problem I have with them, and I, what, I, what I would argue, it's a semantic thing, but it matters, and it's an it's a approach issue. Too many Republicans on Capitol Hill, including Speaker McCarthy, will say, climate is a problem, but we have a solution, and we're going to plant trees and do carbon capture. And they, that's the message left by many of these politicians. And the problem is, that's as unscientific as saying climate's a problem, but we're going to have the Green New Deal to solve it. No, what they should do is say, regardless of your view on climate, here's our path forward. We're going to pursue free market solutions. But instead, we have, uh, we've gotten mired into a lot of these Republicans, conservative groups who are great on the free market solution, trying to sell people like, oh, well, let's just allow, let's just accept the climate science or say it's a problem. And the problem is you can't do that because you, know, you have to show this is, this, is a, this is a con that they're trying to tell us that we have a climate emergency. I quote Lomberg and Roger Pilkey Jr. and Michael Schellenberg, and they'll all tell you climate change is real and you know, we need, which is fine because CO2 can warm the climate, but it's not an issue that the government can do anything about. And they spend 99.9% .9 of their time, the three people I mentioned, you could call them lukewarmists, trashing all the scientific claims. When I see Republicans on Capitol Hill, they just sort of accept that, okay, we'll accept the premise of all this and now here's our solutions. So you have massive solutions being pre promoted, UN agreement, Green New Deal, and then you have Republicans touting, oh, let's plant trees and we'll spend some money and we'll do some solar and, and we'll do carbon capture. They're not gonna win that battle. It's, a, it's too little, too late if you actually believe we have a climate problem. Instead, they need to reorient it. So that's a big problem right now, I think, in messaging with these groups because I have no real problem with a lot of free market solutions are great. In my book, I detail how since 1970, the first Earth Day, we've radically improved everything well, having massive economic growth and population growth. So that is the way to go. And that's in President Trump's administration proved that. We went headlong into full on energy extraction and exploration, and we lowered CO2 and we boomed American energy. And we were just for the world's largest oil and gas producer. And now we're taking a complete U-turn. Mm. I know we have a lot of uh, libertarians in the audience, uh, people who like Bitcoin, uh, you know, yeah. cryptocurrencies. I myself hold a few. Yeah. Um, what's walk us through this this climate change connection with cryptocurrency, and what can we do about it? Well, I don't, you know, I don't get too much into that. The crypto thing is interesting. I just saw where Steven Seagal has moved to Russia, and he's now being hit for tax evasion because he used crypto. Governments are very, very afraid. Uh, my fear is, and I just saw a whole thing on crypto is the government is going to try to come into this almost like a stealth way and try to take it over. So people are going to think that they're investing and doing things and it's going to turn out somehow the government's either going to regulate it or try to push it out because government can't allow a separate currency that they don't control. We already got rid of the gold standard, what, in 1973, I think it was, under President Nixon. So I just, I think crypto is in the crosshairs of every government, uh, but I don't really get into that too much with the climate. But from an environmental standpoint, as I understand oh, yes, it, they yes. say that it, the energy that's required to produce, for example, one unit of Bitcoin. Yeah, that's just, Talk the, about that. no, that's nonsense. They're piling on, I think it was Elizabeth Warren who's trying to go after Bitcoin uh, that way. They're just trying to, they're, they're basically anything that you want to do that you enjoy, that you like, that increases human prosperity or freedom is going to be negatively portrayed as bad for the environment and then try to shut it down. That was Elizabeth Warren's attempt and a few other climate activists to pile on and scare everyone about crypto. In case any, you know, anarchist climate activists were interested in crypto, they would probably take their signal on that. But no, that was nonsensical claims. Yeah. So uh, just personal question for you. Uh, how do you put up with so many attacks. I mean, you've even got Leonardo DiCaprio, or did yeah. I say that? I'm sorry, DiCaprio? Well, I get, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. how, how do you withstand such, such venom? And, 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 and I assume threats? I get threats. I get mailed to my own home. We know where you live. Uh, they, they found my home address. I get, I've had to call the FBI just to put it on record. FBI is not interested actually in this kind of, actually the FBI agent was very interested and then we told him 
what I did for a living and they literally lost interest. And then they actually said, we're, we're very busy right now investigating January 6th. But I get all that, I get, I get, yeah, I just got stuff saying you hope your children die horrible deaths. I mean, I get these emails and all these other threats and we try, you know, but there's nothing you can do about it. It just means you're over the target. Um, and it's, it's all part of this intimidation. You're not allowed to question it. You know, question something about COVID-19 lockdowns, question something about climate change, you will be pounced on. They have an official narrative. It's a one, we live in a one party state now, unfortunately. They have achieved it with COVID-19. All the praise for China has paid off. They are not gonna give this up. We have Scotland talking about a permanent lockdown now. So anyone who challenges it is going to be in the crosshairs. They wanna destroy you. My fear is someone like Larry Elder is going to be California's Trump. If he wins this recall, he will be treated, not only him, his family, any personal associates, anyone who works for his administration will be, and I'm sure Scott Atlas could probably talk about this next, but I'm, they're gonna be hounded like that, and that is the modus operandi. So me on climate is just par for the course with everyone else on all these other issues. All right, Mark Morano, thank you so much. One last question. Okay. Um, people wanna know, can they get your slides? Uh, yes, I'll make them available at the All right, the all right. let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Mark. All right, appreciate it. Thank you, that was good.